Network. Welcome to the Numerics Video Blog. I'm Jim Chockle, and with me today, Satyam Controller, SVP of the Client Solutions Group at Numerics. How are you doing, Satyam? Hi, Jim. Thank you. Uh, addressing the LIBOR debate, clearly lots of headlines going on around this. Uh, many different recommendations, new proxies coming to market, but uh, really what I want to do today is focus on the role of LIBOR in the valuation of derivatives. I think one of the key issues that uh, I know we've spoken about as thinking about all these different proposals or what are the implications going forward in in the valuation so why don't you start just kind of give us a brief overview of some of the uh, recommendations uh, that are going on in the market so so the first thing to note is that LIBOR represents uh, or has traditionally represented the unsecured lending between banks which we know is not taking place but what is taking place is secure lending, secure by collateral, which is why OIS has uh, come into prominence as we've discussed in the past. So what that means is that uh, more and more uh, derivatives are marked as of OIS, and that means for the valuation uh, perspective, OIS becomes a benchmark, and not only do you have to model LIBOR, which continues to be an important trade, but also OIS for the discounting. As for LIBOR itself, uh, what we have seen from the uh, report that recently came out, uh, which calls for a new financial conduct authority to replace BBA, um, is a number of changes in the way LIBOR is measured and reported. Um, one is uh, a lot more banks are now going to be involved, or at least requested, that they be involved in the LIBOR setting process. Um, secondly, uh, the BBA uh, or FCA rather is actually going to drop some currency so we will no longer see LIBOR for Australian dollar for example. So that, that's an interesting question and, and, and we'll see what happens to all those deals that are marked off of AUD. So let's, let's think about that. Um, uh, let's take the first scenario, more contributors, right? So LIBOR's been at historically kind of low fixed rate at, at a certain mm -hmm. point in time. If you have more contributors, what are the implications to the LIBOR numbers themselves? So uh, one, of the, one of the possibilities, and this has been discussed in the, in, the, in the media, is if you have more contributors, naturally you're going to attract those that don't have the same credit rating as, as the top 20 or the top 10 banks. What that means is that the LIBOR from that perspective uh, is going to be higher. And there's another reason it's going to be higher, which is that uh, because of the increased uh, uh, oversight on, on LIBOR setting, what we see is that uh, uh, the, the LIBOR reported has to be closely tied to actual transactions, uh, which again we know are not many. So as a result, it's likely that the LIBOR setting uh, will, will move up and uh, the big question is, do we transition to this new set of LIBOR procedures over time or do we make a sudden shift and when we make that sudden shift, uh, we could see a jump in, in the LIBOR value, which, as we know, um, is, is used to mark about 350 trillion um, in, in currency transactions and other transactions. So flowing that through to rates, uh, FX, FRAS, where you had that kind of jump, I mean, clearly we have OAS discounting coming now as being driven uh, by LCH as part of the margining, mm -hmm. um, also kind of looking at the standard CSA. Right, we've had the divergence between OIS and LIBOR and mm -hmm. that spreads, mm -hmm. and then they've pretty much normalized and mm -hmm. a couple of hiccups across mm -hmm. mm -hmm. the, the time to give it market volatility. If you had that kind of jump in, in LIBOR itself, right, what, how is that going to flow through to the valuations of these instruments? Well, um, uh, once the LIBOR uh, procedures are put in place and, and there are timelines uh, that are put in place, what we will likely see is that forwards and long, long uh, dated swaps would, would be marked using the new metrics and the market will take a view on uh, how the LIBOR is likely to change and you'll, you'll see a forward market that is uh, already moving as soon as uh, some announcements are being made and then uh, once the procedure is put in place we will actually see uh, the FCA computed LIBOR uh, that will come into come into the picture, and we will no longer have this this old LIBOR. Uh, but the but the big question is, uh, what does that mean for for different people who have uh, loans that are linked to LIBOR or uh, swaps that are linked to LIBOR? Uh, you 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 stand to lose or gain depending on how you're you're positioned against LIBOR. So I think it's well documented in, by many market participants that. They want to stay with LIBOR, right? Because of so many contracts, so many legal docs being pegged. 
right? But yet we're seeing other proxies. Mm -hmm. We've seen the short, uh, the dual curve methodology between mm -hmm. um, uh, OIS as well. Um, what is the role of these other proxies that are coming to market? What what I see happening um, actually is in the short term we'll see these uh, LIBOR review steps that will take place, but in the long term I do see. Uh, as has been outlined in the in the uh, Martin Wheatley report, that uh, we see some of these LIBOR alternatives coming into uh, coming into prominence, and LIBOR today is used for so many different uh, use cases. Uh, the report actually calls for us to review uh, and regulators to review the usage of LIBOR in these different situations and replace them with alternatives like the um, OIS, obviously, uh, but also short-term debt is a, is a possibility. Um, another is the uh, repo-dependent uh, curve. Uh, there is a repo uh, curve that the uh, DDCC has come up with, as you know, and also CD and CP rates uh, could be uh, used for, for benchmarking. So, uh, to sum up very quickly, a lot more complexity than what we've seen yes. in the past. Yes, absolutely. Okay, Satyam, I know there's more for us to talk about on this, but I think we've hit our time. I want to thank you for uh, joining us today. And please, uh, follow along the conversation and join in at nxanalytics at twitter.com. And we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thanks. Thanks.